All right, gang, this problem had a typo. I got a lot of uh, emails from you guys about why am I getting a, a test statistic of 1, p-value of 0. Um, no, I take that back. It's a test statistic of 0, p-value of 1. A test statistic of, you know, that, the other wouldn't even be true. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to focus on working this for English, uh, and I'll go through and, and work each one of these for you. Uh, the, the first thing I did is I came up uh, to Microsoft Excel and notice again that each line had information for one particular student. So this particular student was a male and they were accepted into the program. So I have this saved as Prob 6 on my... Um, ah, I should have gone ahead and done this. On my desktop, so I'm going to go get that. I'm going to attach it. And uh, first thing I'd want to do is set up a table here. And I would use the table function. And I would look at table just to make sure that my uh, numbers match up. So we can see that we have uh, 200 and 200 females, uh, 110 uh, nose on males. So, you know, it's not provided exactly like it is in the table, but that doesn't matter. There is actually a way that you can set the base uh, as yes, where it comes first, and set the base as female, where it comes first. But, um, yeah, I'll show you that if you want to learn it. Uh, I'm not going to show you now because I don't remember. Uh, so what's the value of the chi-square statistic for each program? Well, guys, what I would run here uh, is I would probably just go ahead and run a chi-square uh, test like we did before and I would come in with table and that should do it yeah it does uh, so our chi-square here is uh, 1.14 uh, degrees of freedom and p-value is 0.29 so that's what you would put there uh, what is the odds ratio for each program calculate the odds that a female is admitted uh, well so an odds Actually, this is this is not worded very well. For an odds ratio, you have to calculate that the odds of a female is admitted to the odds that a male is admitted. So this should say, what is the odds for each program? Calculate the odds that a female is admitted, or it should have said, what is the odds ratio for each program? Calculate the odds that a female is admitted, admitted uh, to uh, the odds that a male is admitted. So guys, this is going to be very simple. We're going to come in and look at the odds uh, of a female. So if we concentrate on female, the odds were uh, 20 or 200 to 200. Uh, divided by the odds that a male, uh, and that was 90 to 110. So we can see that our odds is 1.22. So the um, odds that a female is, uh, is admitted is 1.22 higher than the odds that a, a male is admitted. So that's uh, the interpretation. Uh, find the inverse. Well, the inverse is just going to be uh, 1.22 raised to the negative 1 power. Uh, so here we would say that the odds that a male is admitted is 0.82 that, that the uh, odds of a female is admitted. So anytime, you know, our odds ratio, and I've, I've talked about this in a previous video, our odds ratio is centered around 1. And... Um, um, you know, anything greater than one, whatever our focus group is, the odds are higher. Anything less than one, uh, the odds are higher for what isn't our focus group. So uh, find the inverse and provide an interpretation. We've done that. Uh, what are the natural log? Uh, so, guys, the uh, natural log uh, is just EXP 1.22. So that's 3.39. 
and our standard error is just the square root of uh, uh, 200. Let's see, it was, uh, what is it, 1 divided by, so 200, negative 1, plus 200 raised to the negative 1, plus uh, 110 raised to the, raised to the negative 1, plus 90 raised to the negative 1. So guys, our standard error here would be point, uh, point 0.17. Okay, we have a standard error of point 0.17. So uh, we can go on, what's the value of the Z statistics? So that's going to be the natural log of, um, uh, of our uh, one point of our odds ratio. So that'll be 3.39. This will get us pretty close divided by the standard error. I'm just going to put standard error there. So we have a um, uh, highly statistically significant uh, Z statistic. So to calculate the, um, uh, the uh, we're using the uh, Z statistics. We use the, uh, the normal distribution. So I'll use uh, P norm. I'm given uh, the upper uh, tail. So I'm going to go 1 minus P norm for 19.51. With a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, and uh, you know it just comes up with a p-value of zero, and we'd actually multiply that by two because we have two tails, but uh, so uh, we get uh, we do have statistical significance. Okay, I'm not going to work number seven. Uh, I'll give you the answer to number eight, uh, nine, and ten. Uh, let's read this. The difference between means is a good measure of effect size when um, uh, the dependent variable uh, is measured on an intrinsically meaningful scale. Oh, that's pretty pretty obvious. Uh, number nine, a proportional difference between means is a good measure of effect size. Well, you need ratio scale. Uh, so clearly A there. Uh, number 10, when affecting, uh, when calculating effect size, standard measures are scale-free. I mean, duh. That's what standard means, scale-free. Uh, number 11, uh, mean square is uh, 144, uh, mean square error. Okay, this is interesting. I don't remember this problem. And the difference between the means is 10. What's the value of hedges G? Well, hedges G is just the, uh, uh, the mean difference, which is 10 divided by the square root of the mean square error. So uh, whatever 10 divided by 12 is, uh, what, about 0.8 something. Uh, Number 12, two experiments uh, each find that the difference between a control and experimental mean uh, is five units. The subject scores in experiment one were considerably less, so that means that our distributions are tighter, hence the, um, the, the difference has more magnitude in terms of standard errors. So how would a standard measure, well, your effect size is going to be much larger for experiment two. So guys, this is uh, this will be B. All right, that's all I got, man. Bye.